six years ago, I started my journey as a game developer using Unity, Unreal Engine and some more obscure ones. And in this video, you'll see all of the games I've worked on over these years. The lessons I've learned from them led to me getting a job as a game programmer, releasing my first commercial indie game and starting my own business as a game dev educator. So keep your eyes peeled until the end. The first game I ever created was a simple arcade game about falling popcorn made in Unity. This was actually not a solo project and I was dropped into a team of an ongoing game jam without any prior game dev knowledge. At the time I just moved from Europe to Japan and found a game dev college which did free trial lessons on weekends and this game jam was a part of that. I did have a little bit of experience making simple websites as a hobby with JavaScript but C Sharp was on a whole nother level and on my first day I had no idea how to get anything done. After going home I looked for Unity tutorials online and came Came across a video series by Brackies on how to make a video game, which taught me all I needed to know to get started. By the time the next class came around, I was ready to go hard, and since the core gameplay loop was already finished, we started working on additional features such as different types of popcorn that give more points and pickups that would spice up the gameplay a little bit. In the end, the game was well received and it was a great way to kickstart my game dev journey, and I'm still friends to this day with some of the team members. Making a game as a team was a great learning opportunity, but I wanted to have more creative control and decided to go solo for my second project. I didn't have to spend much time brainstorming and a game idea came to me quite naturally. Growing up I played a lot of Sega Genesis and one of my favorite games was Global Gladiators. This was a game released by McDonald's and I don't think many people played it, but I was all about it. I of course wasn't experienced enough yet to make a full-fledged action platformer similar to this, but there was a bonus stage in which you have to pick up trash from the ground and put it in the correct recycle bin while dodging anvils. Making something like this felt achievable with my skill level at the time, however it was also my first time working with 2D sprites and tile maps. In about 3 days I had all of the core systems for the game working and even had enough time to worry about small details such as the grass swaying in the wind. I spent another couple of weeks making multiple stages with varying difficulty, adding controller support and even making a mobile version of the game, which I sadly can't show you since it's not compatible with modern Android versions anymore. To this day I still think this is one of the most fun games I created and I actually found myself getting addicted to it while recording the footage for this video. While working on this game I was already enrolled at the game dev college I talked about earlier and we did a lot of classes about making novel games or puzzle games. But all of that was too simple and didn't really interest me though and it also didn't prepare me much for my next big project. After having made a 2.5D and 2D game in Unity, I thought it was time to try my hand at making an actual 3D game. And this also marks the last time I worked in Unity before making the switch to Unreal Engine 4, for reasons I'll get into later. This game was based on one of my childhood favorites from the Sega Dreamcast era called The Typing of the Dead. This spin-off is basically using the game files of House of the Dead 2 and replaced guns with keyboards making you defeat zombies by typing out words. Setting up the typing system for my game wasn't too hard and spawning monsters that run towards you was also a piece of cake thanks to Unity's navmesh system. And I put together a working prototype within a couple of days. But after that the real struggle began. Of course I needed a map for the action to take place in and found this free viking village map on the asset store. It looked nice enough and I also found some skeletons for enemies that matched the art style. But the files for the map were huge and the ground texture alone was too large to be committed to my version control system. At the time I still didn't know about git lfs and had to make many adjustments to the map to be able to upload it. I also struggled with the wave system and making waypoints for the camera movement throughout the map and thought to myself that I might be in over my head with this project. But after spending many more weeks on it and doing a lot of research on the systems I had trouble with, I somehow persevered and finished up the game. Even though in the end I was quite happy with the mechanics, I just wasn't satisfied with the graphics and tried to mask that by cranking up the bloom, putting in depth of field and using a lot of flashy particle effects. All of my other 3D experiments in Unity also left me rather unsatisfied with the graphics and I felt like it was time to switch things up and try something new. But before we get into that, did you know that you can actually make awesome 2D games in Unreal Engine 5? A while ago I created the ultimate Unreal Engine 2D game development course which is highly rated, has over 7000 enrolled students and will teach you how to make 4 awesome games over the course of 12 hours. Please check the discount link in the description to get it. This was another student group project including planners, programmers and artists and I somehow ended up being the lead programmer on this one. After a couple of brainstorming sessions we decided on making a twin stick shooter with a strong emphasis on teamwork. Players would be able to mount each other to shoot enemies on ledges and also reach higher areas. 
back then, Unreal Engine 4 still had a twin stick shooter template, which we used as a starting point. And even though for most of us, this was the first time working with Unreal Engine, a lot of the concepts we learned by using Unity also applied here. Our 3D artist would put together a simple model for the player characters, which we then used with Mixamo to get all of the animations necessary for the player. For the main enemy type, we kept it simple and just used a static mesh of a red RC car that didn't need to be animated. Since Unreal Engine has a long history of being used for shooters, we could make use of things like the projectile movement component to get our combat system set up in no time, and even went as far as implementing super attacks that can be used after filling up your gauge. You would fill up your gauge simply by defeating enemies, but also by using a Doom style glory kill on enemies that are low on health. To top it off, we used one of the free Paragon assets to create a pretty involved boss fight at the end of the level. His body would be invincible and you'd have to break both arm cannons first before you can deplete his health. All in all, I was really happy with how this project turned out and being tossed into the deep end with Unreal Engine made sure that none of us ended up getting stuck in tutorial hell, but rather worked on a real project right from the beginning. But yet again, working with a team meant that I had to make compromises and couldn't just make whatever game I wanted, so next up was another solo project. For my graduation project, I decided to work on a third-person action game that revolves around a hunter and their pet companion, which I worked on for about 320 hours in Unreal Engine 4. Ever since playing a Torrent Hunter in Vanilla WoW, I was completely engrossed in the Hunter class fantasy of setting traps, controlling beasts and shooting enemies with bows or rifles. But I always felt that the outdated tap targeting combat style of WoW really limited the possibilities of what can be done with this archetype and wanted to put my own spin on it with freeform third person action combat. Setting up the third person shooting through line traces was simple enough and making a system that allowed me to freely switch between controlling the hunter or the pet also didn't take too long to figure out. I also wanted to have abilities like frost traps you could lay down and lure your enemies into, however I couldn't find any fitting assets and had to bust open Blender for this one. I'm really not all that good at making 3D models, especially back then, but using a very low poly art style overall allowed me to make the frost trap, bow and arrow and an enraged particle effect all by myself. After putting in a charge shot and a triple shot ability, I was very satisfied with the base combat mechanics of the game. But from this point onward, the real challenge started. One of the biggest problems I had to overcome with this game was related to AI behavior since I not only needed AI for the enemies, but also for the beast companion and the hunter. Whenever the player switches the controlled unit, the other unit, be it the hunter or the pet, would automatically be controlled by AI. By default, the AI would just follow you and only get aggressive if your party is being attacked but you could also manually command it to move to certain areas or attack certain enemies. I also ended up putting together a small open world, a quest system and a boss fight, but there is way too much to talk about when it comes to this game and I actually made a separate video in the past you can check out if you want to know how it turned out. While I was working on my graduation project, another game jam at school came up and I really didn't feel like taking on another big and time intensive project. The topic of the game jam was destruction. And this time around we formed a team with just two members and did something a little bit different. One day I came across something called Infinity Engine, which is basically an Unreal Engine project that allows you to easily make modern Sonic games. It comes with a fully working Sonic character, props and enemies and I've been wanting to make a 3D platformer for quite a while. So instead of making something from scratch, we decided to create our own small game using Infinity Engine as the base. One of the problems with that was that even though the gameplay with Infinity Engine feels amazing, under the hood it's a complete mess and it has the worst blueprints I've ever seen. But after a while we figured out how things work and were able to wedge our own gameplay functionality in there. We first enabled split screen multiplayer and the ability to damage one another to turn it into a versus game. We then also put together a small map with buildings that can be destroyed to fit the theme of the game jam. However, we didn't really know at that point how to optimize the mesh slicing and the game would have really bad issues with stuttering. Nonetheless, it was a cool experience and learning how to deal with other people's bad blueprints is definitely a skill that came in handy many times after that. Having crossed 3D platformers off my list, the next genre I wanted to try were fighting games. Shortly before my graduation, I somehow got invited to a one-day internship at Bandai Namco Studios in Tokyo. Events like this give you a chance to learn more about a company and allow you to show off your portfolio to possibly get a shortcut to getting hired. At the time, I was playing Soul Calibur 6 competitively and I also loved Smash Bros Ultimate and Tekken 7. So you could say I was a huge fan of Bandai Namco fighting games and I wanted to make a good impression. Especially because I completely messed up my internship at Sega's Yakuza Studio before that. But that's a story for another day. 
I haven't really tried making a fighting game at that time since I wanted to do it right and kept on pushing it off. But being given such a huge opportunity, I decided that it's now or never. The base idea was to make something similar to Nidhogg with one hit kills and moving around the screen, but due to time constraints and a lack of fitting assets, it somehow ended up being closer to Smash Bros. Instead of percentages, it had an armor system and the more damage you took, the lower your armor would get and cause you to get knocked back further. The goal was of course to knock your enemies off the stage just like you would in the Smash Bros series. I had a hard time finding fitting assets with animations for fighting games at first, but Crunch from the free Paragon library had many different punch animations and seemed like a good fit for what I tried to achieve. Making a full on block system like regular fighting games would have been extremely complicated, so having a parry was a nice compromise since it's a lot easier to balance around that. A missed parry would leave you vulnerable, but when parrying successfully you would push the enemy back by a set distance, depending on how strong their attack was. The game does feel very clunky, but I had a lot of fun just playing against my friends and making it taught me a lot about combat interactions in Unreal and influenced a lot of my future work. It also made a good impression at Bandai Namco Studios, however I eventually decided to not apply for a job there there, which brings us to the next topic. While I was still a student, I got a part-time job as an Unreal Engine programmer for a VR game company. But I don't really have many good things to say about how they handled that project, so in order to not put them on blast publicly, I'm not gonna name any names and just show some footage of similar VR games. The game I was working on was a VR sword fighting game with really clunky combat. And all of my advice on how to create engaging combat and good hit feedback fell on deaf ears. On the programming side, most things were done in C++ and they were using a customized version of Unreal Engine that needed to be partially recompiled after writing a single line of code. This basically meant that something I could do in my own project within an hour would take about a full day at work, which was extremely frustrating, but also a great learning experience. Over time, the project started to crumble and I was more and more pushed into a research and development position, prototyping ideas for new projects and I also got a job offer to work there full time after graduating. But I actually ended up getting a better offer from somebody else. Since I'm under NDA, I can't really say too much, but this turned out to be an amazing company offering a great salary and a lot of freedom, and I ended up working there for over 4 years total. At first I was working on a 3D browser game that is similar to the Final Fantasy Tactics series. However, since there were strict requirements when it came to load times, file size and the target device, we couldn't use Unreal Engine. And I had to instead look into 3.js and Babylon.js, which are both graphics libraries using JavaScript to make 3D browser games. I was quite happy about this though because I prefer to not do the exact same thing for work as I do in my private life. So using Unreal Engine for my private projects but mostly using browser based technology for my job turned out to be the right decision. For most of the time after that project I actually ended up being a server side programmer for an MMORPG taking care of things like the auction house, tournaments, rankings and so on. Even though I had to learn a lot of new things, the hours were very flexible and that allowed me to start making my first commercial indie game with Unreal Engine on the side. This is the big one. My friend from Game Dev College and I worked on this game for roughly two years. In the beginning, the idea was simple and we basically wanted to make something like Luigi's Mansion but in VR. You could shine a light on ghosts with your left hand to reveal them and then suck them up with the vacuum in your right hand, which was simple enough to set up. But after we implemented that, it didn't feel like it could carry the entire game and we started to work on procedural dungeon generation, roguelite elements, different weapons, more enemy types and a couple of bosses. You can probably already tell that the problem with this project was feature creep, but we managed to do all of that in about 3 months and release the game into Steam Early Access. There was one big problem though, the game just wasn't fun, and the sales reflected that. Even though this was our first time marketing a game, we did get a couple of articles written about it, but they didn't have many good things to say about it and one article calling our game Luigi's Tool Shed was pretty savage. We still felt the potential of the game though and weren't ready to just give up, which eventually led to a development time of over 2 years. We added more weapons, more magic abilities, melee combat, more worlds, many different bosses and an arena mode. But none of that fixed the underlying problem of the game just not being fun and the gameplay loop being too slow for VR. For the Halloween update we made a level and game mode inspired by Call of Duty Zombies which was very well received and the first time we ourselves had actually fun playing the game. The more frantic gameplay, smaller stages and proven gameplay loop were a perfect fit for VR and made us completely pivot in that direction and turn the zombies mode into the main game mode. From that point onward we spent about 1 year making 50 plus weapons, an upgrade system, more than 10 bosses and a wide variety of stages to then finally release the 1.0 version of Monster Showdown on Steam. 
Even though the game wasn't all that successful on Steam, we got a partnership with HTC Vive port and got featured in multiple bundle sales of third-party websites, which at least brought in some money. Later on, we also got an offer to port the game to another VR device for a hefty reward. But at that point, I was completely burned out on this game and just wanted to do something different. Throughout these two rough years, we both learned a lot about Unreal Engine, making games in general, and also how the indie game market operates. There are many things I would have done completely differently now that I'm more experienced, but if it wasn't for this game and the lessons it taught me, I probably wouldn't be in a position now where I can teach you guys Unreal Engine on this channel, which brings us to the next project. After basically working 16 hour days and having no weekends for two years, I definitely needed a break and wanted to try something different. During my long years of learning Unreal Engine, I always felt that there weren't any good tutorials outside of the obvious first-person shooter and survival game courses, and I felt that I could make a difference by covering other genres and topics. First, just to get my feet wet and use the knowledge I gained by making Monster Showdown, I also did three tutorial videos that are FPS related. These taught me the basics of outlining tutorials, writing scripts, video editing, and voiceover work, which was all mostly new to me. Of course I didn't want to keep on making FPS videos and I've been playing around with the idea of making 2D or 2D3D hybrid games with Unreal Engine for quite a while. After giving it a try and seeing all of the untapped potential with it, Unreal 2D became my new focus and still is to this day. And again, if you want to learn more about Unreal 2D, check out my course in the description. Having a YouTube channel and sharing clips on social media allowed me to experiment with many different game mechanics and games without the ultimate goal being to make a commercial game. My first big experiment was making a beat-em-up game with 2D sprites in a 3D world. I have multiple devlogs about this on my channel and work on this whenever things aren't too busy with tutorials. Another big project was Bullbeat, which is a 2.5D platformer controlled using the DK Bongos. After watching Super Louis 64 beat Sekiro with the DK Bongos and Jun Ferno's video about typing with the Bongos, I thought to myself that I want to try using them with Unreal Engine. Being a fan of Donkey Kong, it just made sense to create a spiritual successor to the DK Jungle Beat game with a fresh new look and updated graphics. For future projects, I do have a lot of games on my mind I want to make, but all of them require me to create custom pixel art or 3D models. For that reason, a lot of my time recently has been dedicated to learning pixel art and developing a better understanding for art in general, and I feel like I'm fine finally making progress. This won't just affect the games I want to make, but also allow me to teach many new things in my YouTube tutorials and courses which require custom art. So please stay tuned and subscribe to stay up to date with my videos. As always, thanks to my amazing patrons for supporting the channel.